Hello everyone and welcome to the North Hastings Public Library's second episode of STEAM TV, Technology. My name is Emma Dapo and I'm so excited to share this one with you today. Now to learn about technology, we're first going to start with some Lego. We're going to code a Lego maze. Now for this, all you're going to need is some Lego and some Lego characters, which I have off to the side here. Just need one of these. Now, um, first you're going to need, um, as I said, some Lego. Now you can find that here at the North Hastings Public Library. Uh, we have lots of Lego that you can take home and borrow, and you can make this video along with me. Now first you're going to need a faceplate, much like this one. Um, and then you're going to take some Lego bricks and you're just going to build a maze and try and build it uh, so it's large enough for a Lego person to walk through. I did um, two circles wide and then you can build to your heart's content. Just make sure that there is a start and a finish. So now I am going to build my maze and my goal is to get it to the other side of this Lego base plate here. Now, you may be curious as to how one would code um, a Lego maze, and um, I assure you oh, all will be revealed, and I certainly hope that you learn some more uh, about coding along the way. I know I certainly did, and if coding is not your forte, um, or your passion, I suppose I should say, we have lots of um, other things in the works. We have many more episodes of Steam TV to go. We still got, um, we've got engineering next, and then we'll run into art, and then some math to finish us off. And we've just finished a science video as well. So if science is your passion, as it is mine, I totally understand that. I highly suggest that you um, give those a watch and check it out and see what um, strikes your interest. And if you love everything, I suggest staying tuned. We have lots of fun things planned and you can find lots of more uh, fun activities on the library's social media platforms. We have Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Pinterest, and obviously YouTube. And we have lots of fun things planned in that regard. Now, you can see I have my Lego maze completed. Uh, we're going to begin with the coding. So, we're going to start. And we're going to, we're going to speak as if this were a line of code that was running to direct our Lego person through the entirety of the maze. So we're going to start and we're going to walk one, two, three, four, five blocks forwards. And then we're going to stop because we've hit a wall and turn to the right. Now we're going to walk one, two, three, four, five, six blocks forward and stop because we've hit a wall again. And we're going to turn to the left. Now we're going to walk one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen blocks forward and stop as we've hit another wall. And we're going to take a right turn. And then we're going to walk one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks forward and stop as there's yet another wall. And then we're going to turn to our left again taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve steps forward and turn to our right and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps forward, followed by a turn to our left with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and twenty-five steps forward, and then we're at the end of our maze. Now all of those directions that I've just said in coding would essentially be typed into a line or several lines of code and would direct this person through through our Lego maze. 
Now coding has become super important in recent years and so I, I think it's important to have a basic understanding as it's likely that it will only become more important in the future. And I think that making and analyzing this maze um, from a coding standpoint is it's a super way to get started with gaining um, an understanding of coding and it's helped me personally as I'm a visual learner. Um, now, what coding concepts can this maze help us understand exactly? So coding is essentially creating a set of instructions for a computer so that it carries out a command or a series of commands. In this case, you're analyzing the instructions that would have been written to have someone travel through your maze. Now, coding is all around us from this slide or from this video that I'm making uh, to the research that I did to find out all of this fascinating information and so much more. Now, computer programming is a process of designing and developing many sets of computer programs to accomplish a specific computing outcome through many different tasks. And these tasks can include analysis, coding, algorithm generation, checking the accuracy, resource consumption of algorithms, and a bunch of other cool things. Now, the purpose of computer programming is to find the right sequences of instructions that solve a specific problem on a computer. Now, in this case, our problem is from getting from one end to the other of our maze. And those specific instructions were the directions that we took to get there. Now, different languages are used in programming. Just like human languages, they follow grammar called syntax, or the certain basic program code elements common for all programming languages. In the English language, the syntax is the arrangement of words and phrases to form proper sentences. Now the syntax can vary, which can create many different meanings of sentences and different uh, mental pictures or imagery when you're reading or hearing these sentences. For example, quickly he moved and he moved quickly are two sentences with the same words but different syntax. Each creates a different mental picture and even carries a different meaning. Now, computer programming syntax is similar, and as with English, there are many different ways you can form the sentences of code. The most important computer programming syntax include the programming environment, data types, variables, keywords, logical and arithmetic operators, if-else conditions, loops, numbers, characters and arrays, functions, and input and output operations. Now, these are very complicated syntax that would definitely come with time and effort put into your studies of computer programming or coding, and um, they can change the way that a line of code runs. For example, if you added if-else conditions, you could change whether a line of code runs at all. And if it does run, it's only because something specific has happened. For example, if our character takes steps forward, they can only turn to the right if else there is a wall there. If there was no wall there, the line of code would not run. But since there is in this maze, they can take a turn to the right and continue to the end of the maze. You can also add loops, which could have the code repeating itself over and over again. Our character would just keep running through the maze. Now, there are also different languages that you can program in, and they're all used for specific and different things, just like how languages on the earth are only spoken in certain places of the world, or are more common in certain places of the world. For example, Python is a language that is used for web and internet development, scientific and numeric applications, desktop, graphical user interfaces, business applications, AI, and machine learning space. Um, but Java, another language, is used mostly for developing Android and web apps, as well as big data. You would need to select the language that is appropriate for the work that you're doing when you are, comp when you are coding. Now this might sound very complicated, but you can certainly start small. At the Northeastern Public Library, we have a ton of books on coding for all ages. There are also many resources on the internet that you can check out to learn to code. You can check out our Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest for posts about coding resources, both physical and digital. And you can also look for opportunities online to participate in coding. I myself have participated in many forms of coding in the past with varying degrees of difficulty, from working on Lego kits, which allowed you to code your creations and make them move, to working with Python coding on astrophysics related activities as a part of a seminar. You can certainly start small and work your way up and you can be exposed to it in so many different ways. 
I also believe that this will be a really good skill to have in the future as our society becomes more and more reliant on technology. What if one day you get the chance to help build a starship? Having a good understanding of computer programming could help you to fly to your greatest heights. I certainly know that I'm going to do my best to learn some more. Um, and we can always help you to search for some answers. And with this next activity, we can look into one of those cool coding languages and um, take a look at it in a more visual way as well. And in a way that's um, a bit unconventional, but I think it's, it's more fun. And you remember things better when you're doing something that is, it's enjoyable. So we can set our Lego aside and begin our next activity. So this is going to be some binary code jewelry. Now for this, you're going to need some string. A uh, bracelet string works best for me, but you can use whatever you have on hand. Some scissors, adult supervision is of course recommended. Um, you're going to need some beads. I have these beads here. You will need two different colors and a fairly large amount of those two different colors. Um, and you're going to need a binary code chart. Now I've listed a link to one in the description and if that one is not something you want to use, you can find binary code charts just by searching those three words on Google. That's where I found this one. Now first, you're going to choose the colors of the beads that you would like on your bracelet. I'm going to do white and pink. Um, I'll just open that up. Um, and then, again, make sure you have plenty of each bead as we're going to be using them quite a fair amount. Um, and assign one colored bead to the number one and the other to zero. And remember which bead you assign to which number as this is essential in creating the jewelry property. I have mine written down on my binary code chart. So I have assigned white to zero and pink to one. Now we're going to find the first letter of our name on the binary code chart. The first letter of my name is E, so I'm going to look for the E, uh, the uppercase E specifically. Um, you can use the lowercase if your chart does not have uppercase on it. Um, and so in binary code, if I take a look, E is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, I'm going to take some string. I suggest leaving it as is, not cutting it too prematurely, just because we don't quite know how much we're going to need yet. So we're going to take some string and we're going to code our name. So the first letter is, or the first number, sorry, is a zero. So that means a white bead. And then we have a one, which means pink. That's followed by three zeros or three white beads. Two and three, which is followed by a one, so another pink bead, a zero, so another, yeah, a white bead, and then a final pink bead. And there is E, the first letter of my name. Um, now we're going to do uh, M. So it starts with a uh, zero. It is zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. It starts with a zero, so a white bead. And then it has two ones, so two pink beads. And then that's followed by a zero and two more ones. So a white bead and then two more pink beads. And then that is followed by a zero and then a final one. So we're going to have one more white bead and then a final pink bead. And then we'll just repeat because there are two M's in the middle of my name. So we have zero, then we have one, and then we have another one. And next we have a zero followed by two ones. So we have the white bead followed by the two pink beads.
and then we have a zero and a one. And as you can see, I'm already starting to memorize what the M is. I didn't even need to look at the sheet for the last two. So it's definitely, it's helping me to memorize the binary code. And there are the first three letters of my name. My name is pretty short, so it ends with an A, which is 01100001. So it starts with that zero again, so a white bead. And then it is followed by two pink beads, two ones. And that's followed by four zeros. So we're going to place four white beads onto our string. Just like that. And this is followed by a final one. So a final pink bead. Flip that onto the string. And there you have it. My name in binary code beads. So then I'm just going to slide the beads close to the end of the string as possible. Now this looks like it's going to be a bracelet for me. It could be a necklace for you if you have a longer name. Whatever the case, I suggest perhaps some adult supervision for this as you don't want to drop all of your beads off of your bracelet or your necklace onto the floor. I'm doing a triple knot. And then, of course, out of the supervision again with the scissors as you cut off the remaining strings. And there you have it, my name and binary code. Now, let's talk about what binary code is exactly. So binary code is a numbering system made up of ones and zeros that are used to write digital data, like the computer processor instructions we use every day on our computers. These are instructions that allow you to uh, use a web browser, for example, and to watch this YouTube video on your computer. So, as you can see, binary code is quite important when it comes to computer programming, so it's a good idea to learn it, and I think making the jewelry utilizing the binary code is a, it's a fun little way to, um, to learn the code, and it helps you so that if you ever do need to use it, you can have it at your disposal. I suggest trying to spell different words on your bracelet. Maybe make some friendship bracelets with your friends and spell out their names as well. Or maybe you could communicate secretly something like this uh, with the binary code. I think that could be super cool and could really help you uh, learn without realizing you're learning. It wouldn't be too intensive and it would be kind of a, a fun way of getting an introduction to this, and maybe memorizing a couple letters. Even that could help you later on. Um, you can also learn a ton with the websites listed in the description, the many wonderful resources here at the North Hastings Public Library. Um, you also always have the internet at your disposal. Just make sure you are searching safely and responsibly, and learn everything that you can. Totally. Um, immerse yourself in this if this is what you love, if this is what your passion is, and I suggest learning everything you can about it. If this is not what your passion is, which is totally fine, mine personally is science, um, you can check out our previous and our upcoming STEAM TV videos from the North Hastings Public Library. You can find them on our YouTube channel. Um, we have done science um, next we're going to have some engineering and then some art and some math, which should be quite exciting. You can also check out our various social media platforms. Again, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we post lots of fun activities on there and uh, you can always ask us questions. I will look at all the comments below should you choose to leave any and do my best to help you out in any way I can. So thank you for watching today's video and I hope to see you next week. Goodbye.